Hi, it's DeWire, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is August the 17th, 2024. Let's talk about a young prospect. He has a fight coming up today. And let's just say it's a big moment for him because he's fighting an unbeaten opponent. He's heavily favored. The question is here, is Alois Jr. a cruiserweight? What I call a ringer. Let's talk about it. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, we're hard on prospects, right? I understand that young fighters need to learn a few things on the way up. It's very rare that you see a finished product as a young fighter, right? It's very rare. If people dig back into my uh, videos here, you'll see that when I first saw Canelo, not knowing hardly anything about him, I realized the talent level. Even though Canelo himself, in his career, had to learn a few things from people like Floyd Mayweather, another uh, precocious fighter. Well, here you have an interesting personality. Alois Jr. has already lost. He has less than 10 fights as I make this video. Right? He lost his first fight, just like Hall of Famers Bernard Hopkins and Juan Manuel Marquez did. Right? Marquez got disqualified. That fight's a little bit different, but Bernard Hopkins went out and lost his first fight. Was fighting out of weight. Right? Had to kind of figure things out. Now, what makes Alois Jr. interesting is the fact that he has certain things that you really can't teach. He's a young guy. So, of course, he's going to do some things that carry a lot of risk and not realize it. One of the things he does that is high risk that would probably cost him against uh, J.O. Pattaya, the top of the cruiserweight division, or a Gilberto Ramirez, is that he has young reflexes, so folks, he drops his hands. And I'm talking about early, right? This is a guy who early in fights, before he figures out what you're doing, before an older fighter would take the risk of dropping his hands, Alois Jr., who leans forward and longtime subscribers know to me that's a mistake that's a habit that needs to be unlearned i would rather a fighter lean backward think ali think vitaly klitschko right but alois jr leans forward so he's leaning toward the pocket he's extremely heavy-handed with both hands folks as Teddy Atlas says, punchers are born. They're not made. This is a puncher. But when you throw on him, right, let's just say, while a freak athlete, Floyd Mayweather, would be wearing body armor. In other words, Floyd has his shoulder in the way. Floyd has his head tucked, right? In other words, Great reflexes as a young guy, but yet he has the full body attack. So he doesn't have to be completely alert. He is alert. Defense is a focus of a Floyd Mayweather. Right? But Floyd, even if he's not fully alert, has a shoulder in the way. You're not going to find his chin with a right hook. Aloys Jr. right now is on the other side of the street. This is the puncher who you throw the right hook. He has great reflexes. As I said, he has young reflexes. He'll intuitively just lean back. 
the punch will pass him. Right? You know, let's just say the risk involved, and I need for young fighters watching this video to figure it out, is that you're fighting a fast southpaw. So the angles are different. Right? That southpaw can think you out of your shoes. We're talking about J.O. Pattaya here. Understand, if Opataya sees that you are leaning back without body armor, that your defensive construct is your reflexes, where, you know, you see a punch coming and you lean back, a J. Opataya can make it look like a punch is coming. A fainter like this at the higher levels of the sport can faint the punch, have you lean back. Then when you lean forward without body armor, they're ready to throw their real punches on you. In other words, they can faint through your defense. What I want people to do is to look at films of young Roy Jones. Folks, that was a key part of Roy Jones's offense. He was fast like Opatia, right-handed, not southpaw, but he was fast like Jay Opatia. He would have his hands low. This is what the masters do. Larry Holmes, Roy Jones, he would have his hands look like they're out of the frame. You wouldn't be able to focus on his hands. Then he would faint using a shoulder, right? Using whatever he could to have you think a punch was coming. If your hands are down and you don't develop the habit of having a hand up, leaning away, if you haven't figured out positioning, if you're leaning over the pocket and a guy misleads you into believing that he's throwing a punch, then after you lean back out of the pocket, the guy can wait for the lean. He can then jump in and hit you. Right? Look at Roy Jones, Vinny Pazienza. That fight's a masterpiece. Or he can faint, you lean back, then as you start to lean forward, he knows he has you naked. Understand, there's another group of fighter out there, Gilberto Ramirez. Now, Gilberto Ramirez, I talk about him and say that he's one of the sport's premier body punchers. But understand, this is an elite fighter. This is a complicated fighter. He's a switch. In other words, he also has a long jab. Right? If he's up close to you, he can take away your body. But if he's far away from you, he's still dangerous. Because this is the guy who's big for the division. Think about it. He's big for Cruiser. And he's coming up from something like 168. You can imagine how big he was. He was David Benavides, basically, um, in another life. Right? So he's big. He has long arms. If he sees you leaning back without defense up, with your hands down, right? And that obviously has worked for Aloys Jr., who's with one of boxing's elite trainers, Anthony Joshua's trainer, Ben Davison. Right? Just to understand, an Aloys Jr. leaning back in the pocket would still be within range for someone with ring coverage like Gilberto Ramirez. All Ramirez has to do is figure out the sequencing. He sees Aloys Jr. leaning back. It doesn't matter how hard. Aloys Jr. hits if he can't throw that punch leaning back. In other words, if he's not Vitaly Klitschko, he's leaning back, but he's still throwing heavy leather. If he's not that guy, if he's the guy with big power, but not when he leans back, all of Gilberto Ramirez would have to do is wait for him to lean back. Ramirez would then be able to take a step into the pocket, could 
soften him up with jabs. Have the jab in his face. Completely throw him off. And then, of course, follow that up with shots. Right? Gilberto Ramirez, by the way, is a southpaw, just like J.O. Pattaya. I mentioned those two because they're the top of the division. Understand, as we watch Aloy Jr., realize that he's going to learn some things. Right? Realize that he's not in the top 50 right now of cruiserweights in the world. But why are we talking about him? Because he's clearly in, and I mean clearly in, the top 50 talents at Cruiser in the world. For folks, two-handed power, timing like this, uh, reflexes like this. Let's just say the talent is there. He just has to be a little bit more defensively minded. Now, the fight today might be unbettable. Understand, the betting side of the play is actually his opponent, right? Because Alois Jr., gamblers have figured him out, right? The people who gamble, <laughs> gamblers have a bad reputation. The people who gamble, to me, are the smartest people in the room, right? They don't want to be employees. They want to bet on events, whether it's the prediction market, poly market, whether it's uh, sports events, gambling, whether it's stocks and bonds, economic trends, right? Understand, gamblers tend to be macro. Gamblers understand that the public narrative is just one narrative. The gamblers have made Alloys Jr., who's already lost a match, the favorite against an unbeaten fighter named Barati. Right now, Barati needs to be alpha. He likes to have a right hand cocked. He's vocal. Right? You know, he goes, ha, 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 when he's throwing punches. Right? The guys who are vocal to me tend to be guys who need to be alpha. Right? They're accustomed to be in the gym. They don't think that there's anything strange with them yelling out when they're throwing punches. Right? At the more elite levels of the game, fighters figure out that you don't want to telegraph your punches by yelling before you throw them. Right? Sean Porter used to be a yeller. Well, just to understand, Barati is tough. Barati has a big right hand. Barati is a guy who can pepper you with jabs. Barati jumps around more than Aloys Jr. Now, this is a 10-round fight. I'm expecting Aloys Jr. to come out and to eventually land some big punches because the problem when you're alpha, which is who his opponent is, right, and you're a young guy, is you cannot envision the other guy being offensively blessed. And that's who Aloys Jr. is. Right? You think that you're special, that cream's going to rise to the top. You still believe in things like meritocracies. And you don't understand fully that the guy you're fighting only has to be right once with either hand. Right? So, one of the fights to watch today, and today is a fascinating day, but one of the fights to watch is this Aloys Jr. fight. He's a young guy, early 20s. He is immensely talented. His offensive gifts leap off the page. He already has one of boxing's best trainers. Um, he's the kind of guy that talks with Anthony Joshua. And Joshua is very important in the sport. Not just because he is the cash cow of a heavyweight division. But because Joshua is a guy who behind the scenes wants to help young fighters. Right? You don't get this that much. Right? Joshua is a guy who behind the scenes is involved in a boxing charity. 
to help injured fighters. Right, Joshua, an argument can be made as good as he is in the ring, might be a better guy out of the ring. So Joshua has given Alois Jr. some advice. Understand Alois Jr. is in one of those ecosystems. Right, the Ben Davidson ecosystem is kind of like the Emmanuel Stewart Cronk Jim ecosystem. It's kind of like the Tyson Fury ecosystem. Right, there's certain um, there's certain communities out there. Um, Crawford uh, is with the same trainer, Bomac, who is with Chris Eubank, who longtime subscribers here know I think is one of boxing's more complicated, underrated fighters, even now in his 30s. Right, you find a boxing community like this, you want to stay close to it. Because there's a community of fighters, there's a quest to be best, it's a great learning environment. Alois Jr. is in one of those communities right now, right? So pay close attention to this fight. I think the odds for him are a bit too rich. I do expect him to win the fight. Ten rounds is a long time. The guy he's fighting is also a little bit reckless, but of course both of these guys are young guys. I'm expecting Alois Jr. to get a stoppage, but I'm not going to bet on this fight because the odds are too ridiculous. Right? Alois Jr. by stoppage is something like a minus 225. Understand too, you're betting on high risk defense. Right? If Alois Jr. had Floyd Mayweather's defensive awareness, not even his defense, but just the understanding that punches could come back, I wouldn't hesitate to take him in the fight because his punching power is that far off the page. Right now he doesn't. A need for people to understand that Vitaly Klitschko was a kickboxer. You'd be surprised before he became a boxer. Right, so he had a different sense of timing and spacing. I need for people to understand that Ali gets knocked down by Sonny Banks, gets knocked down by Henry Cooper, and let's not kid ourselves, he's badly hurt in that Cooper fight, gets his jaw broken, or at least badly bruised by Joe Fraser. Gets his jaw broken by Kenny Norton. Right? In part because younger Ali would drop his hands. Right? There's a risk involved here with Alois Jr.'s defense. It's great that he has the reflexes he has, just like it was great for Ali. But that comes with a price. And in the cruiserweight division, he needs to realize that if the champ, Jay Opataya, is a master with feints, and I'll just say this, um, of all the fights of the last 12 months, Opataya's rematch against Maris Breedis is one of the most shocking to me. Right? Um... Opatia was so much of a better athlete than Breedis, I simply didn't expect it. When the top of the division is one of the best athletes in the sport and can use feints to get you out of position, if I'm Alois Jr. and I'm already fighting 10 round fights, I would work to have a hand up Right? Fighters need to dream. I would think about why J.O. Pattaya is successful. And how I can start preparing today to try to fight him in a couple of years. Let's make another point too. I call the 154 pound division unsettled. Right? Um, in other words, you have talent. Crawford's there. Sebastian Fundora is there. Virgil Ortiz is there. Um, Zoo is there. Right? But you don't have that one guy 
who you think's the standard bear. Right now at 147, I pointed out that you do have that guy. Right, Ennis. Uh, there's talk of an Ennis Mario Barrios fight. I'm taking the Ennis side of the play if that fight's announced. Right? You know, you hear that fight's announced, I'll be in line that day to put some money on Ennis unless the odds are completely unbalanced. Right? Well, I need for folks to understand that as dominant as Obataya is, um, cruiser weight's interesting. Because Akoli is now the champion at Bridger weight. He's left. Understand, Chris Billum Smith beat Richard Reactpour, who after the fight was talking about leaving the weight class. Folks need to track to the ages, right? Akoli in his 30s, Reactpour in his 30s, Ramirez in his 30s. Right? If I'm Alois Jr., I'm thinking to myself, okay, Obataya, as long as he's here at Cruiser, and between us, as I've long said, Obataya would be able, in my opinion, to run through much of this deep heavyweight division. Forget Bridger. He could jump to heavy. Folks, he's too fast. He is too good a mover to, in my opinion, not be able to deal with bigger, clunky, late 30-ish, early 40-ish heavyweights. Right? A dream fight right now in boxing, if you know, we'll pretend we're matchmakers, would be left-handed Alexander Usyk against left-handed J.O. Pattaya, right? Understand, Usyk would not have the athletic edge that he has in practically all of his fights, right? I believe we might soon start figuring out that Usyk is exploiting bigger fighters, that he actually has more of a physical edge at heavyweight than he does at cruiserweight. Right, Obataya against Usyk would be phenomenal. Well, just to understand, Obataya is going to be a problem for other cruisers for a while unless he leaves the division. Right, if I'm Aloys Jr., I would realize that but for J. Obataya, cruiserweight's unsettled. Right, most of the guys are well into their 30s. Ramirez himself has admitted that he walks around north of 200 pounds. I'm expecting Ramirez, who was too big for 168, goes to 175. Think about it. He loses to Bevel. Then he goes to Cruiser, ends up with a title. I'm expecting Ramirez ultimately to end up in the Bridgerweight division. Let's also reveal a truth here. I need for people to go back through history. Look at the weights for people like Joe Fraser, Ali, Rocky Marciano. Right, folks? Don't sleep on the Bridger weight division. Deontay Wilder in the biggest fights of his career would have been a Bridger weight. The heavyweight division is a little bit of an illusion. Right? I'm just telling you there are a lot of guys, a lot of guys, who over time would be able to win the Bridgerway title and the heavyweight title. Lawrence Okoli today would be a big threat to the heavyweight division. Right? Fighters like Jack Dempsey, for example, would be Bridger weights today. So, just understand, a lot's happening. Aloys Jr., if he is who gamblers think he is, and folks, he's a minus 700 or so today. I'm not recommending betting on the fight. I'm just recommending watching the fight. This is a research fight. 
right? Just understand if he is who we think he is. And I believe we all already know he's one of the biggest punchers at Cruiser. There's going to be a lot of fertile ground for him to explore. Right? This is one of the fights to watch. Don't be fooled by the fact that he has a loss. Right? Carlos Monzon, for crying out loud, lost three fights early in his career. Right? Alois Jr. has Monzon level power. Now he has to figure out how to get the defense and the Monzone level jab. Right? Now he has to figure out who he needs to watch to pattern himself off of. Take a look at the fight. I think this kid's a major prospect. He's fighting an unbeaten fighter who moves better than he does, but who's not as two-handed. Right, folks? It's a major test. Give it a look. The guy's name is Alois Jr. Let me point out, too. It's early in his career. We're working through the nicknames. He goes by another name as well. Right? But I believe he's trying out the name Alois Jr. His first name is Alois. Right? If you see Alois with a Last name that starts with Y, understand it's the same guy. Stop and look at his fight. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. I have some highlights of a couple of Aloy's Jr. fights as well as an interview where he talks about the advice he got from AJ. And folks, it's real talk. I have that in my favorites folder here on YouTube. Give it a look. Thanks for stopping by.